everyone, uh, Professor Phil Travis here again, and we're in Rome, and uh, this is our second video from Rome, uh, coming from the distant outside exterior of the Colosseum and above the old Roman Forum, which I'll show you in just a moment. I showed you a little bit on the inside of the Colosseum, uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Rome more generally and uh, just uh, propose some questions as uh, things we might be discussing um, during the week as we talk about Rome. Of course, the Colosseum behind us was um, begun under the Emperor Vespasian. Uh, it was completed in 80 AD. Of course, it's partially incomplete because of damage over time. There was an earthquake in the 13th century. You know, there's been some minor reconstructions. But just so you know, the, the, the whole thing would have been as high as the highest part all the way around. And there would have been a covering for, uh, for, for the fans and spectators and so forth inside of the uh, of the Colosseum. Rome as a city was built on seven hills and it was located near the Tiber River about 18 miles inland and it was this was done largely for natural defensive purposes and we're up on an area called the Palladium I believe is how it's pronounced and this is where the emperors would have lived this is a top of the forum we're basically standing on a, on a Roman structure that is effectively uh, apartments, corridors, and all, you know, every manner of residence is, is sort of below the earth uh, underneath of us. And the Colosseum and the Forum here are all constructed um, in the low point of the valley between these hills. In fact, um, it wasn't much of this was until the beginning of the 20th century actually underground because water had run down here and buried much of this in silt. Now, um, a lot of the stuff that you see, this, this brown sort of brick, um, actually, uh, which the Romans very commonly built in, much of this would have actually had a facade of marble at the time. And of course, some of it would have been, some of the things you see are large marble stones, but even much of the, the brick stuff that you see would have had a facade of marble around it. Now, here's what I want us to think about. And over here, the, 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 the sort of triangular roof building that you see over here made of brick, that is the old Roman Senate. And near it, in the Forum, of course, is where great political figures and aspiring political figures would have, would have, would have, would have given speeches and appealed to their audiences and their attempts to rise to power. In the Colosseum as well, um, hosting gladiator games, and not only in the Colosseum, but in other cases before the Colosseum, hosting gladiator games was another way that you could gain political prowess by giving favors to powerful people, to making yourself visible to the population. So gladiatorial games were a location for people to rise in political prowess. Now this is what I want us to think about. The Roman Empire is, well, the Roman period is it really is three phases. We have a, a, a phase in which we have a monarchy. We have a phase in which there's a republic. The republic um, ultimately declines into civil war following a, new, a number of conflicts and uh, some serious issues with inequality and a lack of land resources for all people. The Republic, of course, really comes to an end with the rise, of, rise and assassination, ultimately, of Julius Caesar. And then, of course, his adopted son, Octavian. Augustus becomes the first emperor, beginning the imperial period, which lasts into the fifth century. So Rome is a very long history. But the interesting thing is when we think about Rome, sometimes we can think about Rome and we can consider the rise and fall of Rome and consider certain lessons perhaps for other world powers like maybe even the United States. Um, some uh, historians have used the rise and fall of Rome as sort of a, a lesson that Americans should at least, not to say that it's exactly the same, but to at least take heart of and give proper consideration to. Um, Rome became an overextended uh, empire in which the military became intertwined with politics. This led to a decline in politics. It led to economic problems. Rome became a country in which much of the population was um, uh, had a lack of trust in their leaders. Their leaders became increasingly um, brutal and uh, particularly brutal towards their political system. And people gained a lack of faith in their Romanness, a lack of faith in their leaders. Um, and there's other factors that have been associated with the decline of Rome. Political decline, economic decline, hardship for the people due to the elite controlling most of the 
the land that could be used for resource and profit from farming. An overextension of the military, which costs a tremendous amount of money. Um, corruption in politics, um, and the ability to maintain this large empire and to maintain a representative Republican system uh, were some real challenges. And ultimately, Rome saw a, a decline in its economy, in its political apparatus, um, and the empire eventually crumbled. And these are big questions. Are there things that we can learn from as Americans as we think about our democracy, as we think about our representative society? Can we learn certain things from this? Uh, do we face some of the same problems and can we potentially avoid some of the mistakes? Um, big question mark there, but uh, these are not my ideas. These are suggestions that historians have put forth, other historians who have written about this uh, have put forth uh, to help us to, to consider this. Um, and so this week, as in our, in our discussion forums, I hope we are thinking about this and engaging this topic. Um, in what way can we learn from the lessons of Rome, its rise, its height of power, and its decline?